you wanted to tell us? Because we were talking about, you know, how sometimes creative folks are great with the creativity and they love that, that piece of the puzzle, but the rest of it, the business end, the financial end, they don't want anything to do with it, and that's where they don't necessarily merge the creative with business to be successful. So tell us some of those uh, fun some stories. Some of the fun things. Uh, well, this one was not as much fun as interesting, but I spent a full day at the maximum security wing at Rollway State Prison one time. Um, so how did the inmates treated you? Did they smile for the camera? or? Well, some did, and some of them did not want their pictures taken at all. And the guards, they were very, very nervous. And um, we went in, this was for AT&T. Oh, I was going to ask you, who was your, your client? Yeah, and um, at, this was back in the uh, 70s, in like the mid-70s. And they had... When AT&T was AT&T? Yeah, when yeah. AT&T was still AT&T. <laughs> and they had developed a system of uh, locking and unlocking doors and everything, like a computerized Remote, system yeah. uh, using telephone lines and all this so they could, they could control it. But the, their sales force had never been inside a maximum security prison, had no idea what it was like. Right. And so to train them, they wanted to put together a, um, like a PowerPoint, not PowerPoint, back then it was a slide presentation of um, just exactly what it's like inside a maximum security prison. Wow. And so they got permission to go in there, and unfortunately the guys from AT&T came in in suits, which they never do. And, you know, actually, once you get inside, it was very much like the Navy. It looked like it's like, oh, so you felt right at home, did yeah, you? <laughs> you know? And so I just had on jeans and a right. jean jacket and stuff like that. And um, well, you creative because, types can get away yeah, with that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, the, the the inmates are always very suspicious of you know anyone that's outsiders. in a suit and the outsiders yeah. that come in and everything like that. And um, the odd thing there is that the prisoners are loose and the guards are in cages. And like, for instance, like during the day, they get locked up several times, like, I don't know, six or eight times during the day. They have to go lock up to back to their cells. But the rest of the time, their cell doors are open, and they're all just mingling. And then the guards are in cages, like, up around the perimeter. And um, because otherwise, if they're on the floor with them, and also the guards that, that do have to come down on the floor and never have guns with them because it's just too easy right. for the prisoners to, uh, attack, to, and to attack and, and take. take. Yeah. So... Um, the guards were like that were with us were very nervous, you know, especially when we, when we come in there. Now, some of the prisoners loved getting their picture taken, and they they called their cells their houses. And some say, "Hey, take a picture of my house," and they could decorate them or do whatever they wanted with them, including having like a little uh, TV set. If they had people on the outside that would, that would give them the stuff, and a lot of them decorated their cells and have them you know, all different ways. And some of them were really proud of it, you know, and the artwork that they'd done on the walls and. Well, this kind of stuff. And other ones didn't want their pictures taken at all. Mm. And so, like, I'd be taking pictures, and uh, the guard would say, okay, we have to leave right now. You know, and so we'd have to get out of there. Right. Because you can okay. see that some of them are getting agitated, right. and they're very afraid of a, a riot, right. especially when they have people from the outside, right. them taking hostages, right. you know. So yeah. it was an <laughs> interesting a good situation. Situation. But it was really, really interesting. So, you know, um, we're getting down to the wire, um, and uh, you've been so wonderful. Um, I wanted to just, you know, see what else, you know, that you felt has kept you in the game. You know, kept you uh, 42 years in business where, you know, we were talking about, you know, see a lot of your competitors, you know, have gone by the wayside. So what has kept you, you know, because you've gone through quite a few... You know, recessions. You know, yes. I mean, this is not just the first recession we've had mm -hmm. since you've been in business. So, you know, we've had them. You know, we had the 80s and the, and, and the 90s, and, the, you know, we, we've had those recessions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess you started your business in the early 70s. That was a 1970. big... That was a big recession yes, time, was. wasn't it? That's I right. mean, you know, it there was, was a I lot of problems. It was a recession, there. which in a way was kind of good because it really taught me to be very lean and mean. Yeah. And um, also, when you start in a recession, things will only get better. Right. Whereas if you start in good times, then all of a sudden there's a recession. You're, 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 you're you know. da downward. So that, that helps a lot. Then also, um, I think that number one was staying small enough that you could ride out bad times. It's extremely important and not overextending yourself. I know a lot of people that during good times, they started leasing Mercedes and this and that uh, kind of yeah. stuff. You know, Stay all this humble sort of kind stuff. of thing. Right. And then they've got all this stuff to maintain. Right. You know, and uh, when the times get rough, it's, it's tough. And it's also being able to change with the times. Right. You know, as, as the uh, 
business model changes, you have to change with it. So what were or, some of the changes that you saw besides the technology? What else did you know? Well, also, back in the 70s and 80s, they had tremendous budgets right. you know, for advertising. And that has turned around you know, to the point where it's almost nothing. And then, like in the uh, 90s, it, a big, big part of my business was pharmaceuticals. Uh -huh. Because New Jersey's loaded with pharmaceutical right. companies, right. you know. And um, in the 90s, they made it illegal for drug companies to advertise directly to doctors. Well, that was a huge Please chunk of our business, yeah. was, was doing that. And so therefore, you have to find other things that you can do. So part of it was going to veterinary pharmaceutical um, companies and doing work for them mm -hmm. because they could still advertise to doctors. You know, and uh, things like that, making just you know, various changes. And then to, to who you're targeting, too, right? Exactly. You know, first, so, it was the regular pharmaceuticals, and now your marketplace changes, so you.